I'm Dr. Vela here, still continuing in Chapter 1 of The Great Gatsby. We learn uh, a little more about Nick Carraway. We learn that he participated in the First World War. He graduated from New Haven in 1915, so he's another Yaley. So, again, a pretty privileged guy, right? Lived uh, upper middle class, well, probably not upper middle class, a wealthy life, a privileged life in the Midwest. Came to New Haven for college. Um, you talk about uh, you talk about privilege. This guy has got it right. Um, he decided to come east to learn the bond business because he felt restless. So of course, where else would you go but Manhattan and Wall Street? Um, and he came there to the east, and he thought he was coming permanently. Um, and he came there in the spring of '22. All right. So we now have the, uh, the best index for the beginning of this story. Uh, his experience in the, on the East Coast starts in the spring of 1922. All right. Um, he tells us uh, he, had a, he started with a roommate. They found a room. Instead of living in the city, they moved out to the egg, West Egg in particular. Now, I want to... Uh, to talk a little bit about the eggs, okay? Um, and I'm gonna actually show some maps here in this screencast too, because I think it's really important that you understand the geography of this setting, um, because it's deeply symbolic. Uh, it's deeply allegorical. All right, so again, uh, Nick starts off by telling us here that he, uh, it was a matter of chance that I should have rented a house in one of the strangest communities in North America. It was on that slender, riotous island which extends itself due east from New York. And where there are, among, two other, among other natural curiosities, two unusual formations of land. These are the eggs. East egg and west egg. Okay? And they seem... If you're flying overhead, he says, to the gulls that fly overhead, they must seem identical, right? It must be constantly confusing. But he says down here that if you are wingless, that's an interesting, uh, that's an interesting uh, descriptor, descriptor there, right? To those who are wingless. To those who do not soar, what you notice more is the dissimilarities between the eggs. Um, as opposed to the similarities, right? So even though they look so similar topographically, geographically, there is uh, something very different about them, okay? Let me now transfer you over to a map here. All right, here we are. Just going to show you a little bit on Google Maps in New York, okay? Right in here is where the island of Manhattan is. This long-ass island here is Long Island. And it has some of the most exclusive zip codes in the entire country. Uh, you'll notice it's not too far from New Haven, Connecticut, so uh, Nick doesn't have to travel far to get to Yale. Uh, just, you know, down I-95 here. But let's take a closer look at Long Island, okay? All right, so here is Manhattan, which even though it doesn't look like it actually is an island, you just can't tell it with all the bridges and you know stuff in here, but it is an actual island. It does not connect to the borough of Brooklyn. Um, what's crucial here is that the eggs, these are the eggs right here. They were not called the eggs in, um, by people who actually live there. Fitzgerald makes up those names for them. But that's where the eggs are, okay? This is East Egg. This is West Egg, all right? Gatsby and Nick live on West Egg. That is new money. Old money lives on East Egg. And there's this real antagonism at this time in history between the nouveau riche, new money, and old money, okay? Um, the new money couldn't get houses on the East Egg. Old, uh, new money had to settle for houses on West Egg. 
And this is a real metaphor, guys, for the entire United States, where um, the East Egg represents the East Coast, which is the place that originally was settled in the U.S. and the place of old money, right? The Rockefellers, the Astors, uh, the Morgans, um, you know, and on and down the line, Carnegie Mellon, all these other figures, right? These old money. And then there's all the new money that formed in the late uh, industrial age, late 1800s into the early 1900s, okay? Um, well, that's supposed to map on the old money of the East Coast and the old money or the new money of the West Coast, right? The West Coast was new money in the sense that it had been just explored. There was oil money out there. Um, there was especially film and entertainment money was a big thing out West, as we know, right? That's, how, that's Hollywood, okay? So that's a very interesting thing. Now, I want to show you this site I found that I think is pretty tremendous. Um, this is showing the geography of, um, of the Great Gatsby, and we just talked about these two right here, right? East Egg and West Egg. You see in here how close they are. Remember, Nick described seeing Gatsby the first time um, looking across to a dock on the other egg, right? So that means that these things are close enough that you can see your neighbor's dock across the water here. But I want to highlight now something that's also very interesting, which is that... Um, which is that these eggs are joined by a railroad that takes you through Queens into Manhattan. This over here is Manhattan. So when Nick needs to go take care of business, when he needs to go to work, he would ride this train, the old Long Island Railroad. There were also streets and uh, cars. Um, but what's really interesting, guys, here is, so you have this like really uh, rural, pastoral, um, land of the eggs, and you travel to the highly sophisticated um, center of the universe, basically, in Manhattan. And what's in between is the Valley of the Ashes. It's a wasteland. And this is what Queens looked like in the 20s. It looked like ashes, a dump. Um, you had uh, garages like where George and Myrtle Wilson live. It was basically an industrial wasteland, okay? So again, there's a similar way in which this functions as a metaphor for the entire United States, where you have the East as this place of old wealth, the West as this place of new entertainment symbolized by Manhattan here, and what are, what are kind of rudely referred to as the flyover states, right? The whole Midwest, basically everything from, you know, Arizona to Ohio. And this is kind of a, a way we have of looking at the United States, that only the coasts really matter, right? Um, there's a lot of people, and you, you see where that's gotten us in our contemporary politics, right? You have the liberal elites who everybody thinks just live on the coast, the coasts, excuse me, the west and the east. And then you have real red-blooded Americans, right? And those are the ones who live in the flyover states. So keep in mind this geography, guys, the way... West Egg is characterized as subordinate to East Egg. The way the eggs are described as being separated from Manhattan and its hustle and bustle. Um, when you want to get away from the hustle and bustle, you go to the eggs. But to get from the hustle and bustle to the extraordinary wealth of the eggs, you have to traverse this Valley of the Ashes. Okay? So... That's what we have in terms of the geography here of uh, Manhattan, the eggs, and the Valley of the Ashes, which is what's now known as Queens, okay? Don't ever tell people from Queens that, because they will shiv you.
All right, you will get cut. That is no joke. All right, so that's a little bit about the geography, uh, which I think, again, is really important, right? You, you got you to gotta have a strong visual sense um, for the geography of this novel. All right, I am signing out, and the next screencast will hopefully will finish chapter one.